for a session like today? James, it's nice to have a bit of a rest, seeing that we did see our market falling by 2.8% last week, so up by 0.5%, broadly in line with what we saw from the U.S. on Friday, where we saw the S&P 500 up by 0.5%. But once again, very light volumes, just $3 billion worth of stock being traded. Around the region, it was quite a positive story, excluding uh, the performance of the Chinese market. In Japan especially, we're seeing outperformance. And there are hopes that there that the early election that has been called will see uh, the, the, the most popular party at the moment increasing its asset buying program. So hopes of more stimulus has really helped the Japanese market perform in the last, outperform in the last few sessions. On the domestic market, it was really the energy space which outperformed. We saw Santos with a huge performance today up by 3.9% on an oil discovery in the Browse Basin. We also saw Origin Energy up by 4.2%, and that's after uh, getting ready its financing deal for its AP LNG project. And oil prices on Friday were also up by 1.4%, so that also helped the energy space up out. But looking across the sectors, every single sector was trading higher today. We saw some stocks also reaching some 52-week highs, and it does still look like there's a defensive tilt to market players at the moment. We saw a 52-week high for Telstra today, also AHE. We, uh, we saw NHF, which is NIB Holdings, as well as Credit Corp, all reaching 52-week highs. On the lows, though, some of those mining companies caught in the headlights here. We saw Aluka uh, hitting a 52-week low. We also saw uh, Mount Gibson Iron and we saw ASG Group as well as Tab Corp today. So a pretty exciting day, although we did see some light volumes going through with just $3 billion being traded. Yeah, that, I suppose major stories of the day, Julia, very much Billabong, one of the big performers up in the end, closing up around 10%. Uh, I, I love this watching the news generated around this stock, the, the twists and turns, and certainly one that, I'll be honest, I don't really see coming. The idea of a director, indeed the head of uh, America's for Billabong standing aside as he looks to drum up cash to make his own leverage buy out of the company. This one's a little bit confusing seeing that we've already seen two private equity companies walking away from the deal after doing due diligence. So Paul uh, Norday uh, looking at doing a leverage buyout. He's got six weeks to put a deal together. No doubt he's got some confidential information about the company. But when speaking to, uh, I guess, potential lenders or potential uh, people who would be part of the deal, he can't really disclose that confidential information. Mm. In fact, they're really locked out of doing due diligence until a suitable offer is on the table here so it does look like a little bit of a different difficult situation he is a director of the company he's stepping down from that role uh, probably indefinitely now it would be hard to see him coming back to his previous role of head of America's after a potential leverage buyout of the company so this one's a little bit of a strange one given that we have seen the two private equity companies which were looking at a bid at $1.45 walking away from this one we do know that Billabong is looking relatively cheap ever since the private equity companies have walked away from the deal. We've seen the share price falling around about 40%. In fact, if we have a look at earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization, EBITDA, they are predicting 100 to $110 million. And that means that Billabong has um, an EBITDA multiple of about 3.6 times. That's very cheap compared to, I guess, competitors in its area, which trade more along the lines of about six times EBITDA. So yes, it is a cheap company. But given that private equity has walked away a couple of times, I guess the big question question is what advantage does Paul Norda have um, over, I guess, those private equity companies mm. which have already done due diligence?